joining us right now. I'm Giovanna Sardelli, Artistic Associate and Director of New Works for TheaterWorks Silicon Valley. TheaterWorks is working with members from the native Ohlone tribe in the Bay Area so that we may accurately and respectfully acknowledge the indigenous lands upon which our office and our theater sit. We also know there are challenges across the country right now, and we are hoping that everyone is safe and well. And we thank you all for being here with us for our conversation with actress Katie Sullivan, who plays the title role in our upcoming reading of Laurel Olstein's new play, Pandora. It's gonna be available to view from September 24th through the 28th. And for more information and to reserve a ticket, check out our website, theaterworks.org. Katie, welcome, welcome. Hi, hi, <laughs> thanks for having me. And now, where, where are you beaming in from? <laughs> It is a great question. Um, I am currently in the Chicago area. Um, my um, my boyfriend's family is here, and we uh, we got a bunch of tests done and made sure we were safe. And then we came to visit family. I think uh, we were in the New York City area, and uh, not having a yard <laughs> and a place <laughs> to take our puppy and like be outside and all of these things like they it gets to you after a while so um mm -hmm. we've been uh sitting outside a lot which has been nice so listen when i introduced you i yeah. called you actress katie sullivan mm -hmm. but i really i could have said i should have said award-winning actress oh well that yes that's you not, know you are that's not wrong <laughs> yeah it's not wrong. <laughs> I also could have called you an activist and a record setting athlete. Yeah. I mean, a why stop there, right? And also, I want to say for those who don't know you, you are also a performer with a disability. Right. And it's interesting when anybody meets you in real life, that is undeniable. Right. But in this format, people may not know. And uh, is it all right if I, um, of course, because I do uh, whatever know. you were going to say, of course, <laughs> I was gonna, <laughs> we'll find out. Right. I was going to see, um, because we can't see you are a bilateral above the knee amputee. Is that right? Did I say that correctly? Yep. Yep. I was, um, it was congenital. So my mom, uh, had a normal pregnancy. There was no, um, indication that there was something different happening with me and um she was on the way to the hospital for her you know it was, it was time and um uh she was in the delivery room and one of the nurses uh went oh my god and then oh. and then <laughs> they um they gave her some oxygen which i think you'd get in trouble for doing that now but i guess it was uh you know, it, it was a little while ago, but, um, and she woke up in recovery and uh, I was not there. My dad was there and, um, you know, she's a mom. So she immediately was like, what's happening? What's going on? And my dad, um, my dad had to tell her, he was like, she's, the baby is fine. She's healthy. Um, she was just born without the lower halves of her legs. So I have um, to which my mother said, that's all, bring me my kid. Like, what is wrong with you people? Um, so I had the incredible fortune to be born to a set of parents that didn't look at my physical circumstances, something to be ashamed of or something wrong. It was just sort of what was, and we went, we went on from there. It's so interesting because I didn't know you. I, like many people, saw you in your your incredible work in cost of living, Thanks. which for those people who don't know, that was the, that won the Pulitzer in 2018, yes? Correct, yeah. Martina Mayock's beautiful, beautiful play. I, I played a, a character, my character, there were two characters, there's a four, it's a four person play and two characters are disabled um, for those that don't know, but. Um, oh yeah, thank you. Of yeah, course. no, it's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a play about relationships and it's a play about um, people trying to figure out how to make ends meet and how to, how to make their lives work. And disability is sort of 
uh, from the perspective of which we tell this story, authentic portrayals of individuals with disabilities are so rarely seen that just having a disabled body on stage, it immediately somehow becomes a commentary about disability mm. um, instead of just a person trying to live their life, which, which is also one of the things I find interesting about showing disability or, or like Martina kind of, you know, does in her masterful way, but showing disability, but not having it be about disability or in this instance, it's not about, I mean, it has an absolutely nothing with Pandora has nothing to do with disability, but it um, has the potential to color this character in a really interesting way. Um, she's, she is, uh, everything is new to her. And I feel like in some ways there's a, um, an innocence and a fragility mm -hmm. about Pandora and her uh, having over the course of the play, her eyes opened to, to the real world and what the real, what happens in the real world and, and her existence is, you know, potentially colored from the fact that like you visually look at someone who's disabled and they seem fragile and they seem weak or they seem we have all these ideas that kind of come up um that may not have anything to do with you know who someone actually is but um so i i i love all of that that idea of um including it and not pointing at it exactly i i what i also love about it is you know pandora is the ideal woman that is how everyone around right. her talks about her and describes her. And I just, I, I love the reframing that that's right. a given from which we will proceed with our play. Right. I, and you know, I think that's, there's something to be said for the fact that everyone is flawed. So like <laughs> yeah. the idea, what is the perfect woman? What is the idea of a perfect woman? everybody's point of view is going to be different of what that means. Mm -hmm. um, everybody's experience is going to be different as to what that means. And ultimately, if you really want to get down to it, perfection is not achievable. So there is is something interesting to have someone with a culturally perceived flaw right. to portray the, the perfect woman. When Laurel brought me the play and your relationship with the play predates mine. So Laurel introduced right. me to you. And one of the things she said is, she's like, you know that, that quote, curiosity killed the cat? Well, there's another one that is, um, ignorance killed the cat, curiosity was framed. <laughs> I have loved that. And to me, that is her whole retelling of Pandora. Right. Is what has Pandora been framed for? <laughs> yeah, yes, absolutely. <laughs> I, I, I think, uh, and it's also a, I mean, truly a very feminist uh, take and, and, and dive into this. And we have a lot of female perspectives in the play, but also um, kind of that whole Adam and Eve story of like, it was all Eve's fault. Like everything, right. is the, you know, and I think that, I think that Laurel has, uh, is trying not to put words in her mouth, but I think she's uh, having those strong uh, female perspectives and vastly different perspectives are yeah. like, really important to her. So we recorded it early on. So I think in May sort of did a, a short workshop and yeah. then, you know, uh, or rehearsal process and then did a, a filming of it. Yeah, and we recorded it like a theater piece, so we did not stop. So what what people will see is what you would see in a reading. It was so funny. I think uh, this whole new way of storytelling and this whole new way of um, how actors are are interacting with each other and all you know with this whole Zoom world and the all of that. I think um, it was so funny. Scott and I 
we were rehearsing this and then we'd take a break. It would be like, take 10 guys, you know, and we'd go in our kitchen and like make coffee and we'd be like, oh, you know what I found interesting? It was, it, it was exactly like taking 10 in a rehearsal room and saying, oh, you know, in that moment, that was really, you know, like we were, and- uh, so It's nice you had that. The rest of us just wandered around our right. home. <laughs> yeah, you just did circles in your house. <laughs> but I, I have to say that, that it reinvigorated us in a way and and you know there's this uh for artists and for actors and and especially people who who thrive on on you know collaboration and doing all these things together um it's been a hard it's been hard this has been a hard six month you know six months for people in our industry yeah um especially with the uncertainty of when is it going to end? When are people going to feel safe to come back and sit in the theater? Uh, when are actors going to be safe enough to kiss each other on stage and yeah. you know, do all of these things? So um, the, the these moments and these projects online have been um, oxygen in moments of of feeling like I'm you're you're suffocating creatively and then you have these bursts of like oh gosh yes okay I can breathe it definitely it definitely felt like that and it was amazing that you know most of the people didn't know each other like there's you know a few of the Bay Area actors knew each other and I felt like at the end of that just that those short 12 hours yeah that a company had formed and that um, we, cause we were learning the technology together. I mean, that yeah. was crazy. Yeah, it was, yeah, it was early. <laughs> Those were early days. <laughs> and we didn't know, I mean, it was so funny. We didn't know um, like what we could ask and couldn't ask or how tricky it was to pull something off. And so it was fun to kind of play together and see what happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, before we bring them out, I wanted to ask you, because I mentioned that you are um, a record setting athlete. Yeah. And I, so once again, I, as I watched your TED talk and your commencement speech, <laughs> I love your, your website is a wealth of information. Oh, thanks. But I just find that so fascinating, like the whole story of what, what opened up to you when um, you were fitted with um, the prosthetic legs that allowed you to run. Can you talk about that? I was yeah. so moved. I, so being someone who was born without the lower halves of their legs, I had never run in my life. And it wasn't something that I thought about. It wasn't something that I thought I was missing. I just, and I had a prosthetist who awesome. uh, suggested, do you want to try the, the blades, the, you know, the running legs that look mm -hmm. like, you know, blades. I don't know. Um, and I, you know, for me, there was zero uh, idea of like, I had no d illusions, uh, delusions of, of Olympic glory and, you know, I, any of that stuff. Um, for me, it was going to be like, I'll, you know, yeah, it would be cool to be able to run and like ex for exercise and health and fitness and all of that stuff. So, um, I actually approached running not to go way down on a tangent. Um, but, uh, I approached running like I do a an acting job. I started to, th I was not an athlete. I had a hard time calling myself an athlete. Um, and so I started to think about it as a character and I was like, uh, I think an athlete would act this way. I think an athlete oh would God. get up at four and go to the gym. I think an athlete would probably eat this avocado. And I think that, you know what I mean? Like it was, it was, it was the only way that I could do it because I didn't, I, the acting was all I knew. And so it was like kind of fake it till you make it. And then all of a sudden I, I, acted my way to the Olympics, which um, is bananas. It's bananas. You're also a motivational speaker. I mean, you you really are an advocate and you are educating people. There was so much I did not know and still do not know 
Right. Working with somebody who has different physical capabilities. And as we work together in Pandora, we'll have to figure that out. I mean, I'm sure Absolutely. we'll have to talk there about are things. There are things that Laurel has written into the script that I'm already mentally going, I don't know how I'm going to do that. <laughs> but that's fine. And that's part of, you know, again, collaboration. It's interesting. Like when you talk about being seen, I, when when you and I had worked together and did a Zoom reading and we didn't talk about um, your physical, your different, your physical abilities, I realized, oh, was I, was I being respectful? Was I being nervous? Was I like all those things is you realize, especially in a heightened time of like stepping in it, everyone right. is so careful that I realized, well, that wasn't the beginning of a healthy working relationship. <laughs> <laughs> but in the same way, in the same way that I think um, a person from a, a different cultural background or a person from a different ethnic back background, like, I, I don't know that any of us would uh, jump right into like right. talking about things, all the things, let's talk about all the things that make us different. I think, right. um, like you said, a resume, he, it doesn't matter. It's can right. I, from here to here, can I, can I portray this? Can I tell the story? Um, now when we're on stage and we're actually putting this on our feet, um, we will have to have conversations about what's possible. What, what makes you comfortable? What makes this, is this safe? Like those kinds of things. But I don't think there was any sort of misstep in the fact that can we tell a story in a, in a square? Because right. <laughs> we did a good job of telling a story in a square. Katie, we've been talking a lot about your boyfriend. And lo and behold, he has joined us, everyone. This is Scott Aiello, <laughs> a fantastic actor um, yeah. who plays the Zeus character. Um, he, you're best known for your work on Billions, I think. But you have this extensive career voicing, is it over 100 audiobooks? It's like 150 now audiobooks, yeah. And also joining us, we have our playwright, Laurel Olstein. Yay! Yay. Hi, Theater Works people. Hi. No Laurel from They Promised Her the Moon, the show that we opened and then shut because of the oh, pandemic. Um, but I'm so glad that we got to continue working with you, even in this bizarre format, yeah. <laughs> that we could do yeah. this. Me too. I am so happy that we got to work on this together. And Laurel, can you tell us, cause you kind of started this. I wanna know like how Pandora started and then how, how you found Katie. I, okay. um, well, it started actually a couple years ago that uh, the, um, the Villa Theater Lab at the Getty Villa does uh, in reinterpretations of Greek and Roman myths. And they invited me to pitch an idea to something I wanted to adapt. And Pandora's Box myth just kind of came to me. And I realized that I hadn't seen or heard of any plays based on that myth. And actually, surprisingly enough, there really aren't, which seemed shocking to me. And it seems so appropriate to the times. Uh, and so I started working on it and I very much love to work with actors when I'm in process. And I had seen Katie years before at um, the Writers Guild. The uh, a friend of mine was is running uh, this scene night for writers with disabilities. And Katie was in a scene. I think she, she was in her scene, Allison's scene, I believe. But anyway, she was in the, that night. Right. Yeah, I think you're Allison right. Dale. Yeah. And I just... I fell in love with Katie. I just thought, I did. I just thought, oh my, you were so, so funny and so deep and so just luminescent. And I just went, who is this woman? I have to work with her. And I really wanted to write something for, I just sort of put it in the back of my head. When I see an actor that I love, I just want to, you know, okay, I've got to find something. I got to write something or something will come to me. And when I was thinking about actors to put in a room, to play with Pandora, it just absolutely came to me. I went, oh my God, Katie would be perfect for this role. So many things about the way Katie worked as an actor, the way that I saw just made sense. And so we did, she was 
always included in the workshops I did in my living room and in that little dance studio that I, I brought some actors together. And it, it just made perfect sense always. And she brought Scott along. Thank yes. you. Yes. Yeah, it's easy to fall in love with Casey. <laughs> right? Yeah. So uh, that was, that's the story, the short, the short story of the long story. When you went, uh, Scott, when you were invited along, did you know you would be um, roped into, you know, playing Zeus? <laughs> I, I, I really didn't. I mean, uh, I knew that uh, Katie was, she was always going to the West Coast for all the Katie Sullivan things that she has to do, you know, TV shows and all these things. And uh, I just happened to, you know, tag along one time just to keep her company, you know. And uh, I had a bunch of prep work to do on a book or something. And, and she was like... Uh, uh, appa apparently there was a conversation where Laurel was like, oh, I need a, I need a new Zeus. And, and, and Katie was like, well, she knows my, 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 my sweet spot of playing, uh, you know, <laughs> egotistical, uh, uh, um, monsters. And so the ultimate nailed bad it. Yes. Nail it. <laughs> yeah. so, you yeah. know, she, she's Katie read the, the Zeus thing. And if I could speak for you, she was like, you need to play this part. She's yeah. Like, this part is perfect for you. And I, I read it. I was like, oh, yeah, I could play this part. Let's yeah, if you, <laughs> if you saw him on Billions, you could see how he could play Dr. Z. Yeah. Like, it's, you know, uh, which I think is one of the greatest things about being an actor is we get to exercise those parts of us that we don't uh, exhibit on a daily basis. But so he's nothing like that. <laughs> no, uh, no, he isn't. He's in a, fact, he's a you so are so game can we so oh, you are saying that we filmed this we, I, so we did it as a recording because we didn't know when we'd release it um you know we didn't know what unions would let us do it was a crazy time and but what's important is i want everyone to know that it's still theater because we did it straight through right. and your setup was unique oh <laughs> <laughs> yeah can you just describe to us, because Laurel and I didn't even know what we put you through <laughs> until um, afterwards. So can you just tell us what that was like? Uh, so I was in the closet for the Zoom reading, uh, and Katie was in our living room, okay, on a different computer. Now, of course, the thing is about Zoom is you can't be close enough, otherwise there'll be an echo. So I had to completely soundproof myself <laughs> in our closet. So I'm in our closet, but the interesting thing is like, <laughs> and like through, no, through no fault yeah. of Jovan at all, okay? <laughs> like they wanted to do like fun things where like I would suddenly appear, you know, next to Katie, <laughs> because why not take advantage of the fact that we're quarantined together and I could suddenly pop on screen. And, and he's Zeus. Except for the fact that like, and what you have to understand is to dog. soundproof our closet, I have to set it up in such a way that it's very difficult to open and shut the door. Oh. So it had to do with like the, my Blanket. janky building and the way that I had to yeah. build it. Um, so long story short, like if I had like suddenly pop in and we're in the middle of a reading, I'd like quickly run out there and very quietly like take apart my thing and then run out the door and then come around the corner and have the cat and like make the cat meow in her face and then run back and then get back there and go play Dr. Z and then come back and like, okay, oh, and then sometimes I would forget my clown nose and it would be out in the hallway. So I'd have to go grab my clown nose and then come in and be the dog and it was... There was a farce that was going on. <laughs> I, oh, wait, I wish we had had the film of that. Right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Like, it'll be interesting to discover the things in the in the play that will need to be re-envisioned. Because as you were saying, Katie, there are things that you can do in a reading that you're going to have to, we're going to have to discuss, like, certain things. Do and we cut. We cut a lot, actually, to to really make it right for Zoom. I mean, we cut some things that would will come back, or maybe not. I mean, I actually think it it made it a better play. I really think, as a playwright, it was a great process. I mean, uh, yes, it was a crazy time, and it was healing artistically for sure. But it also helped, it made the play better, I think because I, I sort of had to take out the excess. I couldn't just, you know, some words, the scenes that maybe I was a little too in love with that went on a little too long. Like, oh no, you can't do that on Zoom. You really can't. Yeah. And, yeah. It's yeah. a really good editing tool. Yeah. Laurel, I am happy that our relationship and your relationship to Theater Works continues and that we get to present this reading. I want to thank everyone for joining us for this conversation. And make sure you go to our website to reserve your tickets to see Pandora.
You can see it between September 24th and September 28th. And the reading is free, but if you donate to TheaterWorks, there are two wonderful additional benefits. First, 20% of all the proceeds will be donated to the Theater Bay Area Performing Arts Worker Relief Fund. Mm. Second, thanks to the generosity of TheaterWorks trustee, Pat Brisset, the remaining portion of all donations up to $10,000 will be matched, which doubles your impact. So it's a great way to support two organizations. We are so grateful for your continued support and we can't wait to share Pandora with you. Thank you so much. Thank you, you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.